Just a moment. There's some mistake here. Mistake? How do you mean? There's the painting, Mr. Ellis, Boston Common by Dario. Look here, are you sure this is the painting Mr. Ashley delivered? Well, of course we're sure. He just left before you came, isn't that right, Frank? Hold on, Mr. Ellis. You better explain yourself. What's wrong with this painting? Practically everything, Mr. Merriwell. If you two paid cash for it, you've been cheated. It's not a Dario at all. It's an imitation and a crude one at that. Imitation? But well, that can't be. Are you sure, Mr. Ellis? Completely. Even an amateur. And I assure you, I am no amateur could detect it. There's no doubt about it at all, gentlemen. You have been swindled. NBC presents The Adventures of Frank Merriwell. There it is, an echo of the past. An exciting past, a romantic past. The era of the horse and carriage, gaslit streets, and free-for-all football games. The era of one of the most beloved figures in American fiction, Frank Merriwell. Merriwell is loved as much today as ever he was. And so the National Broadcasting Company brings him to radio in a new series of stories based on the famous books written by Gilbert Patton under the pen name Bert L. Standish. Today, The Stolen Masterpiece. <laughs> With a school term at Yale finished for the season, Frank and Bart are making plans for their summer vacation. As our story opens today, we find them riding through the busy streets of New York City on their way downtown in a handsome cab. This shouldn't take very long now, Frank. We're almost down to Greenwich Village now. Well, that's all right. I'm glad to do your father the favor. It's too bad he had to leave this morning, though. I don't know anything about buying paintings. Neither do I, but we don't have to. All we have to do is tell this artist, uh, what's his name again? Dario. Well, all we have to do is tell Dario, this artist, your father's decided to buy his famous Boston yeah, Common. I hope he still wants to sell. For the price your father is willing to pay? Don't be silly, Bart. He'll snap it up. Dad says it's quite a penny. One of the greatest landscapes of its type. So I've heard. I just hope Dario hasn't already sold it. Oh, he couldn't have. Dad has an option on it. Well, then there shouldn't be any hitch. You didn't forget to bring the check with you, did you? Well, there isn't any check. Dario's a temperamental sort, Frank. He insists on cash payments for his work. Cash? You didn't bring along that much in cash, I hope. Oh, no, no. It's still locked in the safe back at the hotel. Dad wanted me to pay for the painting COD right there at the hotel. Well, we won't be bringing it back with us after all. No, huh? no. This is just to close the deal, Frank. Dario will have it delivered to us by this afternoon, and we can ship it right off to Boston. Then we can relax and enjoy the rest of our New York vacation. Yes, I've been looking forward to seeing some shows before we go down to Atlantic City. Hey, look at that. We're down to 4th Street already. We'll be at Dario's studio in no time at all. I, gentlemen, am Dario, and this is my agent, Mr. Ashley. How do you do? Glad to meet you, Mr. Ashley. An honor, gentlemen, I assure you. And this other gentleman is Mr. Strand. One of the foremost art collectors of England. And a warm admirer of Dario's work, I'm bound to say. How do you do, gentlemen? Oh, how, how are you doing? <laughs> but now, don't keep me in suspense any longer. Mr. Hodge, has your father made up his mind about Boston Common? Yes, sir, he has. He'll buy it. At the price we discussed? Yes, sir, at your price. Oh, congratulations, Dario. You've made a fine deal. Oh, yes, the price is most generous. But even for the money, I hate to sell it. It's almost like selling a part of me. <laughs> Pay no attention to him, Mr. Hodge. He's delighted to sell. He'd break your neck if you backed out now. Well, frankly, sir, I wish you had backed out. I'd have given a great deal to buy that work myself. That's true. Mr. Strand's been waiting around all morning, hoping that you'd come and call off the sale. But this news is too good to keep. I'm going down to telephone the papers. Glad to have met you both. I'll deliver the painting myself the first thing in the morning. Well, old man, I'll have to be getting along in a moment myself. Now, about those paintings I bought. I have them right here if you'd like to take them along. Or would you rather I send them to your hotel? I should consider it a great favor if you'd send them directly to the boat. No use my lugging them there from the hotel. Just as you say. When are you sailing? Tomorrow at three in the old theater. Can you have the paintings there? Uh, Ashley will take care of them. But now, if you'll wait until he returns, I'll have him give you a receipt. No, 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 no. No need for that. He can get it to me at the Central Hotel sometime before noon tomorrow. Uh. I should be there until then. Well, that's not far from the Astor House. Mr. Ashley can drop off the receipt when he comes with our painting. Oh, of course. Uh, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. I'm sorry we shan't be able to renew the acquaintance. Goodbye, Dario. Thank you for everything. <laughs> Not at all. I'm sorry you lost out on the Boston Common. Oh, well, we must learn to take disappointments this game. Huh? Goodbye. Bye, sir. Well, we'll be leaving too, sir. 
You have all the details straight, haven't you? Ashley will bring the painting to the Asta house tomorrow, and you'll pay him for it in cash. That right? Yes, sir. Hmm. Well, we'll be going. Oh, uh, but before we do, I wonder if we could have a look at the painting. Oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry, gentlemen, but it's not here right now. Uh, Mr. Ashley has it in his flat. I could send him for it if you'd care to wait, though. Oh, I don't know. No, we can wait, can't we, Frank? Of course. To tell you the truth, sir, Bart and I aren't exactly art connoisseurs anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's certainly true. Uh, just as you like. Everyone to his own taste, of course. But it is a fortunate thing that your father doesn't take after you. <laughs> Otherwise, my bank account would be a great deal smaller. <laughs> There you are, Mr. Ashley. That's the correct amount, I think. Yes, indeed. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Give my best to your father when you see him. I'll do that. You want me to unwrap the picture for you? Oh, no, no, don't bother. Frank and I'll do that. Very well, then I'll be going. I have this receipt to deliver to Mr. Strand at the Central Hotel. I want to get there before he checks out. Of course. Thanks again, sir. Not at all. Good day, sir. Oh, I'm glad this business is over with. Well, so am I. But we better get this painting shipped home to Boston right away. I don't like the idea of keeping such a valuable thing here in a hotel room. You're right, Frank. We'll make arrangements to ship it off right away. Well, let's set it over here against the wall where it won't get damaged. Good idea. Well, what's this? Don't tell me Ashley forgot something. I'll get it. Uh, Mr. Hodge? That's right. How do you do? My name is Howard Ellis. I'm the editor of the Art Bulletin. Oh, the Art Magazine, sure. My father's a subscriber. Uh, come in, Mr. Ellis. Yeah, thank you, sir. This is my friend, Mr. Merriwell. How do you do, sir? How do you do? I'm glad I caught you in, sir. I have a strange request to make. Oh, what's that? Uh, yesterday, an agent named Ashley telephoned me and said that the famous Dario Boston Comet had been sold to your father. That's true, sir. We just completed the sale. Good. I'm in the midst of a series of articles on the Dario technique, and uh, Boston Common is my favorite of all he's done so far. Well, you spoke of a request, Mr. Ellis. What is it? I'm coming to that, Mr. Merriwell. Of course, I've seen Boston Common several times at Dario's studios, and once while it was on exhibition at the Columbia Gallery. But I wondered if it would be possible to have one last look at it before it is sent up to Boston. Oh, is that all? Well, you came at the right time, Mr. Ellis. There's your painting right over there. We haven't even unwrapped it yet. Oh, splendid. Then I may see it. Why not? Let's open it up, Frank. All right, I'll do it. Let's only take a minute. Strange how attached you can become to a thing like this. I feel like I'm saying goodbye to a dear friend. That's it, Frank. Let's turn it around and set it up on this chair. All right. Here we are, sir. Say, it's pretty nice at that, isn't it? Quite a painting, all right. Just a moment. There's some mistake here. Mistake? How do you mean? There's the painting, Mr. Ellis, Boston Common by Dario. Look here. Are you sure this is the painting Mr. Ashley delivered? Well, of course we're sure. He left just before you came. Isn't that right, Frank? Hold on, Mr. Ellis. You'd better explain yourself. What's wrong with this painting? Practically everything, Mr. Merriwell. If you two paid cash for it, you've been cheated. It's not a Dario at all. It's an imitation and a crude one at that. Imitation? But it can't be. Are you sure, Mr. Ellis? Completely. Even an amateur. And I assure you, I am no amateur could detect it. There's no doubt at all about it, gentlemen. You have been swindled. Swindled? Say, Ashley delivered this personally. I'll bet he's behind this, Frank. Probably thought he could get away with it because my father's not here. It looks that way. Must be either Ashley or Dario himself. But they're not going to get away with it. This is the most outlandish thing I've ever heard of. Uh, why don't you telephone them immediately and demand an explanation? Dario has no telephone. Looks like we'll have to go back down to Greenwich Village after them. Yeah, there's just one catch, though, Frank. Dario and Ashley know we're no experts on art. They could just deny everything, then we'd have to wait until my father comes back from his trip. No, no, not at all, Mr. Hodge. All you need is the testimony of a qualified expert. I'd be glad to serve you. Well, sure, that's the answer. Uh, wouldn't it be better if you uh, brought them here? He's right, Bart. That way we can show them the penny exactly as it was in unwrapped. And we could swear it never left this room from the moment Ashley delivered it. That's the best way, of course. Well, how about it, Mr. Ellis? Would you be willing to wait here in this room until we can bring Dario and Ashley back with us? I'd be happy to wait. Unscrupulous men like these must be run out of the art business. And I'll go to any lengths to see that they are. Thanks, Mr. Ellis. Come along, Bart. We'll have those two back here and nothing flat. But what is the meaning of it? I demand an explanation. Yes, gentlemen, you're keeping Mr. Dario from his work. We realize that, and we wouldn't do it if it weren't important. But why must you drag us all the way up to the Asta house? Can't you tell us? We want you to see for yourself. We'll find out soon enough. Pull up at this entrance, Tabby. Impossible! I never painted this monstrosity. Why, of course not. This is the cheapest kind of imitation. There, gentlemen, you see? You were right, Mr. Ellis. Even they can't deny it. Deny it? Do you think for a moment I would claim this this cheap daub as a work of mine? Where is the painting that I brought here? You're looking right at it. This? Oh, you're mad. 
I brought you the original Boston Common. Now, where is it? These young men swear that this is the painting you delivered to them, Ashley. And I tell you, it isn't. The frame is the same, but the painting is different. Now, just a minute. Who wrapped this painting in the first place? I did, personally. All right, Mr. Dario. Here's the wrapping paper we took off it. Can you identify it? Let me see. Hmm. Yes, this is the very same paper. I would swear to it. Good. By your own admission, the same frame and the same paper. And after you wrapped the painting, did you leave it unguarded at any time until you gave it to Mr. Ashley? Not for a moment. In fact, he came to the studio as I was just finishing. Now, how about you, Mr. Ashley? Was it ever out of your hands from the time you left Dario's until you delivered it here? Not for so much as a second. I'll swear to that in court, if necessary. In that case, there's only one answer. What do you mean? I mean that no outside party had an opportunity to switch paintings. In other words, one or both of you deliberately swindled us. Now, see here. You can't make an accusation like that. I demand an apology at once. And I demand that you refund Mr. Hodge his money. Well, I... Here's your painting. Now, give us back our cash. We'll do nothing of the kind. I gave you my original painting. I'm entitled to payment for it. You're wasting your time, gentlemen. We absolutely refuse. I delivered the original painting to you and accepted your signed receipt for it. The deal's closed. But it isn't. You thought just because my father was out of town, you could put something over on us. Well, you nearly did. You were just unlucky that Mr. Ellis here showed up and exposed you. Understand, Dario, I have the greatest respect for your artistic ability. But such a cheap trick, really. How many times must I tell you I know nothing about this? We can't get the police on you for this. My dear young man, if I were you, I wouldn't talk about the police. Call them in if you like, but be prepared to suffer the consequences. Come along, Dario. We needn't waste any more of our time here. Good day, gentlemen. Wait a minute, you two. Bart, let them go. You're right, Mr. Merriwell. But, but we're not going to drop the matter. You can depend on that. How about it, Bart? Don't you want any dessert? No, thanks. I'm not very hungry. This is the first time I've ever heard you say that. <laughs> oh, I can't get that painting off my mind, Frank. To think my father trusted me with a simple little job, and I bungled it. That makes me mad, too. But they haven't licked us yet. Well, they've as good as licked us. We haven't a single clue to go on if there was only something... But we have got a clue, Bart. And a pretty big one at that. Did you mean the fake painting? I suppose it could be traced in time, but it'd take months. Not the painting, Bart. Better than that. The frame. Well, that's no good. You heard Ashley admit it was the same one they swore was around the original painting. Exactly, but let me explain. Now, before we came down to dinner, I looked over the painting very carefully. There's no sign of the original having been cut from the frame. As nearly as I can tell, that painting is the only one that's been fastened in this particular frame. What are you driving at? Now, just this. If we could find the maker of that frame, we might find the proof we're after. Well, maybe I'm stupid, but I still don't see how. Now, let me show you. There's a chance that both Ashley and Dario are telling the truth. And that we have to deal with some other person. Now, if we find that another frame had been made just like this one, we'll know that the person who had made it is our crook. Uh-huh. And if only one frame like this has been made? Then we'll have a fair case against those two. Well, hundreds of these frames might have been made, Frank. Might have been sold in the past few oh, weeks. I doubt it. This is a new frame, and it looks to me like an exclusive. Exclusive? What's that? A specially designed frame in an odd size. Inza showed me one just last week her Aunt Belle had made. They're expensive custom jobs, and they should be easy enough to trace. Well, I guess it's worth a try. Where do we start? Well, most of the bigger frame makers are in the village around Dario's studio. Let's start there. All right. Let's go up to the room and get the picture. That's a fine frame, mister, but I don't make anything like that. Do you know who does? Well, now, you might try Miller's down the block here. He does custom work. Thanks. We'll try him. Oh, not my work. Looks familiar, though. Say, have you uh, tried Ventner's shop? It uh, looks like his work. Ventner's? Yeah. No, we haven't. We'll try there next. Are you Mr. Myers? Well, that's my name, sir. What can I do for you? Uh, Mr. Ventner over on 4th Street said that uh, you had probably made this frame. Do you recognize it? Well, hold it over here in the light. I can tell in a minute. All right. Here you are. Why, yes. Yes, that's mine. Where'd you get it? At last, I'd about given up hope. Tell me, Mr. Myers, is this an exclusive frame? It certainly is. There's only one other like it in existence, and I made both of them. But where did that awful painting come from? Never mind the painting. Can you tell me anything about the two frames? Did you make them for any special person? Well, I made one of them for Dario, the artist, but I'm not sure this is the one. Dario. 
Oh, you know him? Slightly. How long ago did you make it? Why, last April sometime. It was for his exhibition at the Columbia Gallery. I see. And the other frame, was that ordered by Dario, too? Oh, no, indeed. Another gentleman ordered it made only the day before yesterday. He asked for an exact replica of the one I made for Dario. Well, who was that? Well, now, I'm trying to think. I'm very bad on names. Funny thing, I never forget a face, but I can't remember names. Very unusual. But what did he look like? I'm afraid I don't know, sir. He ordered it by telephone. Oh, that's great. Now, think hard. Was his name Ashley, by any chance? Ashley? Ashley? No, that don't sound right. It was it was a name something like Proctor or, or uh, Gillespie or... Uh, that was almost on the tip of my tongue that Oh, time. we've hit another blind alley, Frank. We'll never find out now. Well, can't you remember anything about him, Mr. Myers? Well, now, let me see. Uh, he was an English art dealer. Yes, yes, that's it. Oh, and the name is coming back to me. It was Strang. You don't mean Strand, do you? Yes, 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 that's it. Mr. Strand. I knew I'd remember. Strand. Good Lord, Frank, you suppose you he's You say behind... he ordered this frame by telephone. Yeah. Where did he have it delivered? Why, to the Astor House. Uh, he gave me his room number there, but I don't remember it anymore. The Astor House. Let's get over there fast. Now, hold on, Bart. What time is it? About 20 of 3. Why? Well, don't you remember Mr. Strand is selling on the Althea at 3 this afternoon? Of course. He'll be out of the country before we can question him. Maybe not. We have a quarter of an hour yet. Come on, let's find a cabbie and get down to the docks. What are you lads doing on board? Well, may we see you a minute, Mr. Strand? It's very important. Of course, but you'd better hurry. We're shoving off in a few moments. We'll only take a minute of your time. May we close the cabin door? It's pretty noisy on deck. Yes, of course. Come in, come in. Thank you. We'll come right to the point, Mr. Strand. You're taking a number of paintings back to England, aren't you? I am. That is why I came to America. What about it? Do you have them in your stateroom, or are they in the hold? Why, I have them here in the room. Why do you ask? Frank and I would like to take a look at them. Well, I'm afraid there's hardly time for that, old man. I have them all wrapped. We'll take the time, sir. It's very important. Where are they? Now, look here. I won't have you rummaging through my baggage. I don't intend to open those packages until I land. Now, really, you should be getting ashore. Now, this is important, Mr. Strand. A painting has been stolen, and we want to find it. Dario's Boston Common. Stolen? Well, surely you don't think I stole it. Well, you can prove that by letting us examine your paintings. I'll do nothing of the sort. Now get out of here, both of you. Not until we look at those paintings. No, we'll see about that. Stuart! Oh, Stuart! Hey, yes, sir. These young men are not passengers. Will you kindly see that they are put ashore at once? Yeah, uh, not passengers, eh? Now come along, you two. You think I got the whole day to visit here? We're not going till we get what we came at. We'll see about that. Oh, stubborn, are you? Oh, come along now. Don't give us any trouble. Come on, Bart. We haven't much choice. That's better. Now, I'll hear saw while the gangway's still down. All right, Bart. Let's go ashore. There's nothing more we can do here. Well, there she goes, headed for the Narrows. There goes Dad's painting. Oh, it's a sh- shame, Bart. We, we, we want to have our Well, well we, we couldn't help it. Say, wait a minute. Couldn't we send a cable to British Customs at Southampton? We'll have to report it to the police here, too, of course. They might have even sent the ca- cable for us. Well, then, come on. I want to dump this painting off the Astor House. I'm tired of lugging it around. The Astor House? Hey, wait a second, Bart. I've been blind. What's the matter? Look, remember while we were questioning that frame maker, Myers? He said he delivered the frame to Mr. Strand at the Astor House? What of it? Well, nothing. Except Mr. Strand wasn't staying at the Astor House. Well, I don't... Why, sure, I remember now. When we first met Strand, he told us he was staying at the Central Hotel. Exactly, which means there's something going on here that doesn't add up at all. Now, why should Strand order the frame made by telephone and then have it sent to the wrong hotel? It beats me. Do you suppose Strand was checked in at both hotels? We can find that out without much trouble. Come on, we'll stop at the Central Hotel first. <laughs> I don't get it at all, Frank. The clerk over at the center showed us his book. Strand was registered there the whole time till he checked out to go on the boat. Just what I expected to find, Bart. Now let's see what the Astor House clerk has to say. Yes, sir? Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Merriwell. Good afternoon. I wonder if you could give me some information about a guest. Well, now that depends. Here, maybe this will help. Oh, thank you, Mr. Hodge. 
But what is it you wish to know? Do you have a guest registered here named Strand? Strand? Name is certainly familiar. Yes, let me look at my book. Oh, oh yes, yes, here it is. From London, England. That's the one. Is he still here? No. No, he seems to have checked out at 3 p.m. Checked in yesterday afternoon at 1. <laughs> I'm afraid you've missed him. Oh, fine. Oh, just one more thing, clerk. Can you describe Mr. Strand for us? Describe him? I'm sorry, sir, but I've never seen the gentleman. Never seen him? How come? Well, you see, I come on duty each afternoon at 4. I wasn't here when the gentleman checked in, and I wasn't here when he checked out. But you might ask Perkins when he comes on duty tomorrow morning. I'm sure he'll remember your man. I suppose we'll have to do that. No, Bart, I don't think it's necessary now. Thank you very much, clerk. Thank you, sir. Always glad to oblige. What were you talking about, Frank? Did you find out something? Everything we need, Bart. It's time now for a showdown, and we're going to arrange one. Can you reach Mr. Ellis by telephone? The editor of the art magazine? Sure, why? Well, he asked us to call on him if he could be of any assistance, didn't he? Uh Uh-huh. Well, ask him to be at our room in half an hour. And while you're doing that, I'll get in touch with our friends Ashley and Dario. Now get started. This should turn out to be a very interesting evening. Mr. Merriwell, how long do you expect me to stand for this nonsense? I have work to do at my studio. Yes, confound it. We were good enough to come here in the first place, but you can't expect us to stay all night. We'll get down to business the minute Bart shows up. I'm sorry about this, but I know you're as anxious as we are to clear it up once and for all. Sorry, we're late, Frank. Oh, hello, Mr. Ellis. I'm glad you could come. Glad to do it if you think there's any chance of getting to the bottom of this mess. There's more than a chance, Mr. Ellis. But sit down and we'll get started. Here, take this chair, sir. Thank you. Now, perhaps you'll explain the reason for this meeting? I will, Mr. Dario. It's to clear up the little matter of who stole the painting we paid for yesterday. That's why I've asked everyone concerned to come here. With one exception, Frank. Yes, Unfortunately, Mr. Strand is on his way to London and, of course, can't be here. For the love of heaven, man, get on with it. Very well. Now, I want to point out three curious facts to you all. First, the paintings could have been switched in Mr. Dario's studio before Mr. Ashley delivered it here and collected the money. Mary, well, I've told you a thousand times that was my own original painting I packed. I know. Point two. The paintings could have been switched sometime between the time Ashley left Dario's studio and the time he showed up here. I resent that. That's nothing but a groundless insinuation against me. I tell you, I delivered the identical package that I took from the studio. Very well, Mr. Ashley. Now, point three. According to Mr. Myers, who admits building this picture frame, he received an order to deliver this frame or its twin to Mr. Strand here at the Astor House. What's that? And furthermore, the desk clerk downstairs swears Mr. Strand checked out of the Astor House at three this afternoon. As it happens, both of those statements are impossible. What do you mean? Wait wait, wait a minute. Let Frank finish. Mr. Strand was registered at the Central Hotel and stayed there throughout his New York visit. And furthermore, he couldn't have checked out of here at three this afternoon because at that very moment, his ship, the Althea, was sailing for Europe. Just exactly what what are you driving at, sir? It's obvious that someone has been impersonating Mr. Strand in order to steal the painting. Now, he telephoned Myers and had a frame sent here to the Astor House so that he could switch the paintings here. Oh, ridiculous. Not at all, Dario. In fact, it makes very good sense. But now the question is, who impersonated Strand in order to obtain a copy of the frame and switch paintings? Certainly not you, since you could have made the switch at your own studio. I told you I had nothing to do with it. And certainly not Ashley, who had ample time to make the switch on the way to deliver it. Of course. But hold on, Merriwell. Who on earth is left? You are, Mr. Ellis. Mr. Ellis, you mean me? Oh, I see. Why, you're joking. You're the only one (laughs) laughing, Mr. Ellis. Why, this is absurd. You received the package from Ashley, not I. Why, I wasn't even in the room until after Ashley was here. How could I have switched them? I'm no magician. You didn't have to be. You were clever, all right. I'll grant you that. But that painting we unwrapped for you to see happened to be the genuine Dario. Then you did get the right one, after all. Right, Mr. Dario. But Ellis here knew Bart and I were ignorant when it came to painting. He had no trouble convincing... I'm sure. Then when Frank and I went down to Greenwich Village after you two, Ellis stayed here and had a good hour to make the switch. Mm-hmm. And now, Ellis, you're caught, Ellis, you're caught. Why, you're mad, Merriwell. I-, I haven't anything to do with it. No use squirming. Come on, where's the real painting? Now, how should I? Know? Better talk, Ellis. There are four reputable witnesses here, all eager to testify against you. You haven't a chance, Ellis. Are you ready to return that painting, or do you want me to call in the police? Don't be a fool. Return it. I haven't much choice, have I? Very well, I'll get it. Quick, quick, bark the door. You won't get away. There he is, heading for the stairway. Oh, come on. No, you don't, Ellis. Got him! All right. All right. Don't, don't hit me. I'm giving myself up. You had better. Now, where have you hidden that painting? In, in my apartment. 
I'll take you there. You're a pretty slippery customer, Ellis. Too bad for you. You aren't much of a sprinter. Now, get going. Just think, Frank. In another 20 minutes, we'll be in Atlantic City. Boy, I can hardly wait to see that new steel pier. Well, don't worry, Bart. You'll have all summer to see it. I'm just glad we were able to straighten out that business with a penny in time. Hey, by the way, that was a neat piece of reasoning on your part, Frank. That fellow Ellis will think a long time before he tries anything like that again. Oh, he'll have plenty of time to think about it. In jail. <laughs> I guess he will. He was really clever, all right. I mean, the way he had the original frame copied and everything. Yes. And you know, that was a pretty unique experience he had. Well, how do you mean? Well, he tried to frame a fake picture... And ended up by framing himself. <laughs> and so ends another exciting adventure with Frank Merriwell, beloved hero of American fiction. Brought to you in a new series of stories by the National Broadcasting Company. And be sure to listen again next week at the same time when Frank Merriwell brings you another exciting adventure. Frank is played by Lawson Zerby and Bart is Hal Studa. Other members of the cast were Joe Boland, Ivor Francis, Joe DeSantis, and James Monks. Original music is by Paul Taubman. The Adventures of Frank Merriwell is written by Ruth and Gilbert Braun and William Welch. And the entire production is under the direction of Jack Cuney. There's no point in taking chances when you've got nothing to gain. Yet how many times have you taken dangerous chances on the highway when all you could possibly gain was a minute or two of time? When you think of what you've got to lose, it just doesn't add up. One serious accident may result in your own death or the death of a member of your family or in painful injury and great expense that may last for years. You can avoid all that just by remembering that accidents don't necessarily happen to the other fellow and that it's up to you and not the other fellow to be careful. Summertime always means more driving and crowded roads. So why not decide right now to make it a safe summer by remembering all the rules of driving caution? Make sure that your car is in A1 condition, especially the brakes and tires. Keep within the speed limit at all times. Signal all stops and turns, and stay in your own lane. Just those few simple rules will keep you safe keep you from adding to the terrific toll in lives and in dollars and cents that traffic accidents take every year. So this summer, when you're on the highway, stick to the rules and be safe. It doesn't pay to take chances, and the next life you save may be your own. Remember to meet the Meeks one half hour from now, and stay tuned now for the adventures of Archie Andrews heard over most of these NBC stations. This is Mel Brandt speaking. <laughs>